Hello and welcome back to another video of the Brainy Heart. In this video, we will be talking about vasodilation versus vasoconstriction. Your body has to maintain a certain temperature in order to function properly, and that temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit. So, why does your body need to maintain a certain temperature? Well, the reason why is that your body is carrying out many chemical reactions so that it can function properly. And if you know a little bit of chemistry, you might know that temperature affects the speed of a chemical reaction. And if the chemical reactions are affected, your body might not function properly. So, 98.6 Fahrenheit is the golden number here. And obviously, the outside temperature, which is the temperature of the environment you're in, will have an effect on the overall body temperature. So if it's hot outside, let's say it's a hot summer day and you're playing outside and it's super hot, your body is obviously going to heat up. But if it heats up, then it will not function properly. So your body has to come up with a way to release the heat. In contrary, if it's cold and snowing and you're playing in the snow, and it's, let's say, in the negatives, your body temperature is going to drop, but your body has to maintain the 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. How does it do this? In the hot, it has to release heat. In cold temperatures, it has to keep the heat, or it has to trap the heat. So, this happens through vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Let's zoom in to this area of your skin. So if we zoom in, we will have the first layer of skin here. And there's obviously going to be some arteries running through the skin. Let's say this is a RDL, which is just a smaller version of a artery. And then obviously, there are going to be capillaries rooting off this RDL and supplying your skin cells and skin tissues with oxygenated blood. So here where the capillaries are, which is this area. So here, where the cells, the skin cells get the oxygen and they produce CO2 as a waste product. When this happens, heat is released. The release of heat is normal. So that's basically how blood is delivered to your skin. And also one thing I forgot to mention was that your skin acts as insulation. Just like your house has insulation built in, your body does too, in the form of skin. So you have insulation all throughout your body. Now, when it's too hot outside, your body temperature might start rate rising. But your body still has to maintain the 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, which is the golden temperature. So, think about your skin as the insulation of your house. Think about the human body as your house. If it's too hot inside your house, what would you do? Well, the first things I would do, one of the first things I would do is open up the windows. And that's exactly what your body does as well. Your body tells the arteries to expand. Hence, there is more blood going through here and there is more heat leaving the body. Just like when you open up a window in your house. And more release of heat means that the body is getting closer to reaching the golden temperature, which is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. So your arteries and capillaries are widened, and this, and this is called vasodilation. So when your body is, body's temperature is rising, your body has to get rid of heat. So in order to do that, it opens up the arteries and capillaries, so more blood passes through and more heat is released. Now, what happens if it's negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and you're out playing with your siblings in the snow? Well, obviously, your body temperature is going to drop. If this were your house, your house's overall temperature would obviously drop in the winter as well, just like your body's temperature. What would you first do? If any of the windows are open, you'd probably close them shut because you want to trap all the heat inside your house. Well, that's basically what your body does as well. Let me draw the same model of the zoomed in version of, of the skin here. And we'll draw the RDO. Not the best drawing, but you get the point. When you compare the model on the right to the model on the left, 
you can tell that the capillaries are very tight or they're constricted. This is called vasoconstriction. So what happens here is that less blood passes through the capillaries, so there is less blood for the cells to absorb. So when the process of absorption of the blood and production of CO2 happens in the cells, like I said before, it produces heat. Now if there is less absorption, there is less production, meaning there is less heat. So less heat will leave your body, meaning more heat is trapped inside your body. And I keep forgetting to draw this in, but your skin serves as extra insulation, trying to trap the heat in as well. Just like your house has insulation almost everywhere. So just like we, you would close your windows in the winter, your, your capillaries in the, on the surface of your body close up. They do this so that they can trap heat, and that's one of the reasons why your hands and why your palm and your foot turn blue. That's because less blood is going there, and more blood is going, being circulated inside your body so that more heat can be produced and trapped. So that's why you might have blue hands if you're staying out too much in the winter. And when vasoconstriction happens, your blood pressure might rise, and during vasodilation, your blood pressure might drop. But those are all just natural things that your body does. So just to recap, when it's too hot outside or when it's too cold outside, your body has to maintain the golden temperature of 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Also, I forgot to talk about this, but what causes your capillaries and blood vessels to vasoconstrict and vasodilate are smooth muscles surrounding that organ. They tight enough when you want vasoconstriction to happen and they relax when ways of dilation is supposed to happen. One of the best analogies for this concept is connecting your human body with the house. And ways of constriction would be closing the windows during the winter, and ways of dilation would be opening up the windows so that you can push out all the heat in your house during the summer. So your house and your human body have a few similarities. But that's basically the overview of thermal regulation in your human body. I'm always open to comments, suggestions, and or questions. This is the Brainy Heart signing off. I'll catch you later in the next video.